the smartphone that we have in our pockets? That is the new digital cocaine. And today in this video, I'm going to explain exactly what happens and how it works. Now, to understand social media addictions, we need to first start by understanding the social media companies. Take something like Facebook or Instagram. The question we should ask is, how do they make money? But somebody might say, I thought they're free. We don't pay for them. Of course, we don't. But look at 2020 revenues of Facebook. Globally, Facebook, Facebook earned more than 6 lakh crores rupees equivalent. Okay, I repeat this number, more than 6 lakh crores. In billions, this would be upwards of 80, 85 billion dollars, more than that. That is the amount of revenue they got. Now, if you're earning that much revenue, you have to be selling something. What are they selling? They are selling your time and attention. Every time you are on Facebook and you see an ad or you click on some, some ad, what happens? Facebook is making money. So they are making this money from advertisers who get a chance to show their ads to you. So think of it this way. You could have spent 20 minutes or half an hour, let us say, spending playing with your kid or working on something which is meaningful to you. But instead of doing that, you spend those 20 minutes on Facebook and Facebook gets richer. They have sold your time. That's how the world works. Now, the next question is, if you were Facebook, think about it, if you were Facebook and you wanted to increase your revenues, what would you do? You would want naturally to, peop for, to people to come to the platform and spend as much time on Facebook as possible. In fact, in the ideal case, if they just came and stayed on the platform, just maybe taking a break only to go to washroom, that would be so wonderful. Some people, in fact, get so stuck up in things that they actually end up spending that much time or a lot of time on Instagram or Facebook or things like that. Now, how do you make people come and spend time on your platform obsessively, compulsively? You know what I'm talking about, addiction. We need to make it a habit. They have to want to come and check Instagram, not because they want to, not not even without thinking, unthinkingly, they should come and check Instagram or Facebook or, uh, or maybe WhatsApp or something like that when they're getting bored. So we need to create these habits. And in fact, we need to make the habits so strong that they become addictions. What are addictions? Addictions are habits which have got two additional characteristics. One, one thing is those habits are so strong that you, are, you almost feel compulsively forced to go and take that action. Second thing is when those habits are they have a negative impact. They are harming us, yet we cannot stop ourselves. Okay, so when that happens, that habit is now called an addiction. And this is truly an addiction. Now, how does it work? Let's understand the mechanics. For that, we need to understand a chemical, a neurotransmitter in our brain, which is called dopamine. You might have already heard about it. All right, now when somebody has cocaine, what happens? The, there is a strong sense of pleasure and our in our brain, the dopamine level goes up. Goes up by how much? 10%, 20%, 40%? No. If, you have, if someone has cocaine, the dopamine level goes up by many times. That is what makes cocaine so addictive. Now coming to social media platforms, so as an example, now you post a photo on Facebook and somebody comes and sees it and they like it, what, what do they do after that? They will click on the like button. This is the single biggest innovation, I would say, which Facebook brought to social media. I'll, I want to share an example here. So when I was studying in college, in hostel, uh, in Hall 3 at IIT Kanpur, we used to have this notice board. And on that notice board, sometimes people would go and post maybe, maybe a poem or something they have written. So they want to share something. Photos are not very common, but you would see occasionally some photos of events, etc. Now, in some sense, that is what you do in Facebook. You share your stories, posts, uh, photos, videos, etc. But in that notice board, in, in one year, I would see maximum two or three people coming or maybe five people putting something out there. Why is that? Think about it. If there is a nice post or a story or poem somebody has put, and if I see and I like it, what do I do? Nothing. I just walk away. 
But when you are on Facebook, you like it, what do you do? You click a like button. Now, two things happen here. First is the person who put the content, as an example, if I did that, I will feel amazing. Like, wow, 100 people or 1,000 people or 10,000 people like what I, what I wrote or what I posted. Second thing is not just me, everybody else can see that, oh, wow, you know what, that guy's, his post is now popular or it is viral or it is like, uh, it's a big deal now. And then over time, people start gathering followers. On Instagram, that's like a big deal. There are people who are known because they are, they are famous for being famous. They have lots of followers. Now this becomes a game. So now if somebody wants to get that validation, get those likes and, and follower counts, what do they do? They want to put better, more attractive content. Now, Instagram does not have to do anything. They have to just sit and watch, sit there comfortably. People will bring in content. So when you go to go to Instagram, what do you see? You see all this amazing, exciting, beautiful pictures and stories and stuff like that. And then when you see you, you put a like or you put a comment or do a share or follow that person, they get even more excited. They do more and more of it. Not just that, you can do the same. So when you put your post, you want to see now who is going to like it. Now, here's a deal with dopamine. Anytime, anytime somebody likes your post or someone does something which gives you a sense of pleasure that you did not expect, what happens? The dopamine level in the brain goes up slightly. What does dopamine do? Dopamine, think of it this way. Dopamine is a chemical which makes you want to do it more. Think of it this way. Dopamine equals do it more. Okay, I'll repeat. Dopamine equals do it more. So if I put a post and my putting a post gets 10 likes and that makes me feel good and then there's a dopamine level going up, I want to do it more. Next time I'll feel more motivated. Now just imagine this, you keep checking Instagram, you keep po keep posting or keep checking posts, maybe doing both, and people keep responding to your posts. Now what happens? Every time you check your Instagram feed, you get some, you get some dopamine hit. And when dopamine goes up, you feel, let me do it again. Right? And, and that thing continues. But your brain starts making this correlation. You know what, every time you check Instagram, there's a dopamine increase. Right? Now it can make that correlation. And after some time, once you've done this many, 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 many times, your brain does not even wait for you to pick up the phone. In fact, this is the other thing. Your brain can release dopamine in, in anticipation. You have not checked Instagram yet, but your brain has made that correlation. Checking Instagram equals something exciting, equals dopamine release. So even before you have done it, in anticipation, when you're getting bored and think about, you think about Instagram and your brain will release some or dopamine level will go up. And remember, once dopamine has gone up before the action, what does dopamine do? Dopamine equals do it more. It will make you want to check your phone. At that point, it has become a habit. When dopamine starts getting released before the action, it will make you do it. It becomes a compulsive thing. And then if you keep repeating it more and more and more, this habit becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. At some point, you just do it without thinking. And then you know it is not good for you. All of us, when we check smartphone, how many people come back and say, wow, today I checked my Instagram 50 times. Do you feel like that? Of course not. We all hate it, yet we cannot stop ourselves, which means it is destroying our time, focus. It makes us feel terrible after the fact. But we can't control ourselves. Now tell me, a habit which is harming me and which I cannot stop myself from doing. What did I say we call it? Addiction. Social media is an addiction. Cocaine is an addiction. They all work the same way. That's why I said in the beginning, what we are carrying in our pocket, it's not a phone. It is a digital version of cocaine. And be careful. Be watchful. Be mindful. Because if you don't pay attention, you are going to get sucked into it and after some time, there'll be no time left to, to do things which truly matter to you. It will destroy all your time, your focus. Instead of spending time with our family, with friends, playing games or doing things like that, we will be sucked in this black hole from which it looked like there is no exit. That's not true. There is a way to come out. But that's not the topic for this video. Here I want to just explain to you how this thing works, how cocaine and social media, they are both using the same dopamine chemical to, to hook us and to make sure we never get out. And we have to get out of this. Only then we can be free people. Thank you for listening. I hope you liked this video. If you did, subscribe to this channel and I hope to see you soon in the next one. Thank you very much. Bye.